Today, we have a really exciting presentation for you. We have Eric Kahalen, who is a police detective and he works a lot with narcotics. And he's going to be talking to you about the methods that teenagers use to access drugs and giving you all the information you need to be able to have these discussions with your child and to know what to look out for yourself. I think I wanna start today with a story about a year ago, our patrol was dispatched to a call of an overdose of a teenager. Upon arrival, the officers observed a, another teenager using CPR on his friend who had overdosed. Paramedics uh, arrived on scene and were able to administer what we call what is called Narcan. The friends that were there had told us and the paramedics that their friend had taken some OxyContin and that they believed that that was the cause of the overdose. Through the, the friend's assistance with the CPR and the use of the Narcan and the paramedics, they were able to save that teenager. And we were talking to the kids that were there and they were explaining to us how they had purchased some uh, pills through a what they called a plug via Snapchat. He went, they went, to, you know, he went to the hospital and the kids went home. And every, you know, the, all the kids that we talked to, everybody seemed fine, everything seemed really good. And when the teenager the next morning was being discharged from the hospital and his mom was there and he said, hey, I need to go to my friend's house to uh, get my cell phone, you know, to get my cell phone and get some of my personal belongings. So they drove to the house and the front door was open and they, the mom had gone up the stairs, at which point she saw his friend, the one who had been giving him CPR and who actually had uh, a big part in saving his life was deceased on the on the floor. Come to find out, his friend had also taken or used the same type of pills. What we learned was that they had all been purchasing um, these these pills online through Snapchat. A laboratory test later showed that the OxyContin was laced um, or created with uh, some fentanyl. You know, a common thing that we're seeing today is uh, drug dealers or drug, drug manufacturers are pressing their own pills. As a result of the information that was provided by the kids, we were able to track down several of the the dealers. Um, a common mistake amongst uh, the kids these days is that the law enforcement has zero access to the information that's out there on Snapchat, and, and we actually do. And through uh, a long investigation, we were actually able to arrest uh, some of the people involved in the sales of these these kinds of drugs that are being uh, made accessible to teenagers uh, online through various platforms. So uh, it's just one example of a really sad story of a situation that you know maybe could have been avoided had the parents been more either more involved or maybe had a, a, a resource like an MM guardian to. Uh, be able to monitor a lot of the conversations that their child was having. You know, the primary platforms that we're seeing is is Snapchat and Instagram. Those are those are two very popular platforms. The the reason again for the the, the use is uh, both the buyer and the seller are under this misconception that you know they can't be tracked at all, which isn't true. Uh, it can be but it's much more secure than a lot of the other alternatives and just the basic cell phone and basic uh, texting or photos and things like that. And what Snapchat does is it offers a, a massive marketplace to the seller um, in, a, in kind of a virtual world where they are buffered and, and a little bit sealed off. They have ways that they can vet or clear the buyers and they do that through asking for live snaps, photographs, where are they at in the moment? And law enforcement just doesn't really have that capability. Now, the reality is even in using the platform, there still um, has to be typically a face-to-face -face meet. And you know, that's really dangerous, right? So they're meeting strangers via these platforms. They're, they're communicating and connecting. False sense of security as if they're getting to know the person that they're going to deal with. They're getting a false sense that the drugs that they're about to purchase or the products that they're going to purchase are are safe because the, the dealer's showing them live photographs or they're opening the package to 
let's say if it's going to be uh, a prescription medication like Adderall, they're going to open a package or show them a pill bottle. Like, look how, you know, this, this stuff is pure. It's great. Well, that's not actually what they're going to be buying. And then there's the, the actual meet up, the risks of meeting a stranger uh, at a remote location and bringing money. Seems obvious to what the, the dangers are to that. The other side of that is then they're going to purchase a, a product and a drug that they have really no knowledge about where it was created or how it was made. Talking about some of the drugs that kids are purchasing today, we're, we're seeing as young as elementary school into middle school, vape products, vapes, the little plugins. They're purchasing those via an online platform. They get introduced to what we call plugs is one terminology. Traps, T-R-A-P-Z, traps is another. Uh, those are two pretty popular terms that they use for the seller on the internet or on these platforms. They don't know where the vaping products obviously come from. Again, the chemicals that are in there, the substances that are being used. Marijuana is a big one. Marijuana today is not marijuana of the 60s and the 70s or even the 80s. Marijuana today is, is, is strong. It's um, grown synthetically. And it has much more of an impact on a developing brain and body. Some of the terminology. Uh, online that you'll see um, related to marijuana. They call them trees. You'll see things like uh, emojis, like maple leaves or palm trees, broccoli or Christmas tree. To me, the next one up these days are a lot of the pills. So Adderall, Oxycontin, Oxycodone, uh, they can get exposed to those through their homes a lot of the time or through friends who have prescriptions. And then once that prescription no longer becomes available and they can't get it cleanly through a, you know, through a direct party, somebody they know, then they reach out to the plugs and the traps through the platforms. And that's where a lot of this uh, self-manufacturing issues occur because you don't know what the compounds are that are being put into those uh, pills that your, your kids are buying. From the pills, uh, you move into some of the little bit of the harder drugs like cocaine, some of the emojis. Are, are snowflakes or snowman, um, or they'll put a key emoji in there, an eight ball. Um, well, you, obviously, you can use the, the basic terminology of coke, snow, powder, blow. And another common one is uh, they like is a yayo, which is they spell that Y E Y O. And there you're really getting into uh, street drugs like uh, methamphetamine. And, you know, methamphetamine is a stimulant, it's, it's a synthetically manufactured narcotic. Uh, it's, it's one that I think a lot of people don't know how it's made. It's not made in any type of laboratory, that's for sure. And it's made with a lot of different and various poisons. Uh, so really, really dangerous, very addictive. Some of the common terminology um, for it is ice and glass, rock, tweak, uh, tea girl. Uh, and a lot of the emojis that we see for that are diamonds or a rice bowl or again, an, an eight ball. Typically they purchase them in small amounts, either what we call like a, like a half gram or a gram, or you may hear the, the term or see the term teener. You know, the platforms are quick and they're convenient. And, you know, we live in a world today um, where we all want things right now. Oh, we're, we're in a place where if we need something, it's, it's really at our fingertips. And that's the same for our kids. Whatever they need is right there. In this, in this case, it's it's drugs, it's narcotics, the the dangers of a world that they're they're not familiar with, but is is right in their face. And so you know, these platforms give them the capability of having whatever they want, whatever drug they want to try, whatever substance they they want to experiment with, is is literally just a, a Snapchat away or just a an Instagram message away. And, you know, that's scary. So I, I love having the idea of some parental control, which I think is has to go hand in hand with the communication. Do you see a surge of drug abuse during the pandemic? It's a great question, John. Yes. The answer to that question is yes. Being home, I think that the, the teenagers today in this past year have been uh, under an uh, immense amount of pressure with not being able to go to school and not being able to be out socially. We've, we've seen a lot of mental health issues, uh, a lot of depression, and with that, um, a, a definite surge in drug use. 
by teenagers. Um, we've seen a lot of overdoses just in and around our own area. We, we live and we work in a pretty wealthy, pretty uh, healthy area. And so if we're seeing that here, you just have to imagine that that's translating and it's, and it's radiating uh, throughout the country. And I think studies are starting to show that being at home during the pandemic and uh, homeschooling and kids locking themselves behind their door and then parents also being under a lot of pressure, whether it's working from home or having to find um, different ways uh, to provide for their families, which may include having to be not be at home in a situation where kids typically wouldn't be alone all day. We've been analyzing our data as far as the alerts, and there's been a pretty big uptick in all sorts of categories from suicide alerts to drug alerts. So this kids being shot inside has definitely led to some severe consequences. So parents need to be Make sure they're very, very open with their children about the stuff and keeping a close eye on them. There's nothing more dangerous than downtime. Also, I had a question that I just thought of. From your story, when you were talking about the teen who overdosed from the drugs he got on Snapchat, you mentioned that he was treated and released. Was there any sort of penalty that he encountered due to doing the drugs or because one thing that I imagine a lot of kids would experience is their friend is overdosing maybe and they know they should call 911 but they're worried about getting in trouble. So how would you handle that from a, your law enforcement perspective? I mean, so first of all, um, here in Southern California in California, if you call 911 and somebody's overdosed and we respond, as law enforcement or paramedics, even if there's some drugs there, you know, some you know, some type of narcotics that clearly is for personal use, um, there there's not going to be charges. Um, we're not in the business of getting kids in trouble after they've already made a mistake. I mean, really, it's going to be about getting them help, um, not not about getting them char charges, so to speak. Um, I would encourage parents to, to, to talk to their kids. I mean, the importance of getting them the medical, their friends, the medical help they need. And even if there's some parental consequences, whether it's, you know, being punished or some type of discipline, the, the death of a friend or the bad situations medically that can happen, um, whether it's, you know, brain function or issues with your heart or kidneys or whatever long term that come as a result of an overdose. I think that's a really important conversation to have, that if you're with friends and somebody has made that decision and that decision um, turns into a medical emergency, 100%, you have to call and get them help. The police aren't going to come there with the intention of arresting all the friends because their friend overdosed. Um, that, that won't be the primary intention of being there. It's to get your friend help. Um, and then there's also, yeah, I mean, there's a little personal accountability when you're making decisions, but the other side of that far outweighs, um, again, any type of discipline that you may receive, which will be minimal, really will be about why did you make this decision and now how can we intervene and help you so you make a better one and we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely important to talk to your kids and make sure that they're not scared of asking for help.